what Confucius meant about the quality of music when he says it's based upon the quality of its music. He wasn't talking about what kind of genre the music was in. He wasn't talking about whether it was rap or country, rock and roll, gospel or jazz. What he was referring to when he met the the uh, uh, the quality of its music was what frequency was that music being played in, and what mathematical intervals was that was the uh, the difference between the uh, the frequencies. You see, that was absolutely crucial for thousands of years during the Chinese dynasties. Uh, the emperors would send out teams of people all over the kingdom to make sure that the that the uh, the people were playing music in the rock in the right frequency, the proper frequencies with the proper intervals. They had strict guidelines about the music that was being played because the emperor knew that if you had different factions of different kingdoms playing different types of music, different frequencies of music, that all those different realms would soon be at strife and, and against one another. So it was imperative that the entire kingdom played music in, in tune with one another, and they set specific and strict guidelines of, of what frequency was this music to be played at. So 2,500 years, uh, uh, or actually 4,500 years ago, the Chinese were using uh, the vibration of music uh, to control the people. Now let's fast forward to today. Now what do we know about today's music? What do we know about what tuning our music is in and where did this tuning come from? The intention of this video is to improve your knowledge of musical vibration. I mean, what do we really know about music? The air vibration of its sounds are physical and measurable, yes. We know that a singer can shatter a glass with her trained voice. Troops marching across a bridge in unison have been known to collapse that bridge unless they break their rhythm before marching across it. Even subsonic vibrations which precede an earthquake can cause animals to become disoriented, thus driving them from the area. I mean, we are dealing with a very impressive force. Today, extensive research has shown that music can speed or slow your heart rate, relax or jar your nerves, affect your blood pressure, digestion, even your rate of respiration. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you that music can also affect your emotions and desires. It can have a very significant influence on your mental processes and in turn can influence an entire society as the Chinese knew over 4,000 years ago. So where did the frequency of today's music come from? Just about the entire modern world uses the standard concert pitch of A equals 440 hertz. Now what this means is, on a piano for example, the A above middle C is tuned to 440 hertz. Then all the rest of the notes uh, are tuned around this frequency. But the problem with this is, there's absolutely nothing harmonious, either biologically or cosmically, with the 440 hertz frequency. So why are we using it? In many cultures, this tone is used in connection with sacred rituals. In India, this tone is called Saja, father of others, and the sitar and tambora are tuned accordingly. In Sufism, it is said the one who knows the secret of this tone knows the mystery of the universe. The shamanic festival use of a specific series of drums, trumpets, and harps in ancient Sumeria had them all tuned to 432 hertz. The original Stradivarius violin was designed to be tuned to 432 hertz as well. The archaic Egyptian instruments that have been unearthed so far are largely tuned to 432 hertz. 432 hertz touches the full 12 scale octave overtones of all music in creation, whereas 440 hertz only touches 8 octave overtones, leaving out an entire section of the complete musical resonance of the universe. The diameter of the moon is 2,160 miles, which is 432 times 5. The diameter of the sun is 864,000 miles, which is 432,000 times two. The precession of the zodiac equinoxes takes 25,920 years, or simply 432 times 60. Half of a day, or 12 hours, is 720 minutes, or 432,000 seconds. The harmonic six of the 432 is 720 hertz. There are 432 Buddha statues at Mount Meru and 72 stupas. A healthy athletic adult at rest has an average heartbeat of 60 beats per minute, so 60 times 60 minutes in an hour times 24 hours in a day equals 86,400 beats per day, which is 43,200 times 2. Now even one of the world's largest sporting goods manufacturers produces a special series of golf balls that Tiger Woods uses that features a 432 dimple configuration. How do they come to that? 
Well, several decades ago, a group of engineers inputted all the various parameters of golf ball design into a computer in order to determine the optimum amount of dimples on the surface, which can effectively reduce drag and give more loft and distance to the ball. It is obvious not only to Nike, but to other leading sporting good manufacturers as well that the acoustical geometry of the 432 allows for optimal harmonic performance. So they obviously knew that the 432 was embedded in the very workings of the cosmos. For example, it takes 25,920 years for a complete precession of the equinoxes. That's one complete cycle of the zodiac. Today we are leaving the age of Pisces and entering the age of Aquarius, so there are 12 ages in one 25,920 year cycle. And if you multiply the 432 by, by 60, you get 25,920. This is an important point because 60 is the base measurement of how we count time. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, etc. It was also the base counting system for the ancient Sumerians. So, the precession of the equinoxes and the 432 literally are revealing the timing of the pulse of life. These fractal cosmic relationships are ingrained into every experience all life forms have. It is the reason behind why the builders at Mount Meru put only 432 Buddha statues. Simply, our higher consciousness is being harmonically inspired to acoustically resonate with the overall frequency of the cosmos. Now, for example, let's take one of the most infamous numbers in the Bible, the 666, which is said to be the number of man. And let's look at a quote by the ancient philosopher Pythagoras, which states, man is two octaves below God. Now, if we go back to the 666, and what if we uh, interpret that to mean six times six times six? If we do that, we get 216, which is half of the 432, or one octave below the 432. So if man is the 216, then the 432 would represent enlightened consciousness by the 432 Buddha statues. Then one octave above would be 864, or the level of God. So the 432 is the vibrational level we are all moving towards. So according to the ancient Christian text, the Creator spoke through the authors of the Bible, and they simply wrote the words down. So if these are the actual words of God, then encoded in them could be some hidden patterns or even possibly some deeper insight into the underlying messages. When studying this topic, it turns out that a man named Vernon Jenkins found exactly that. In 1987, Mr. Jenkins, a well-respected lecturer at the University of Glamorgan, developed a system to reveal hidden patterns found within the original Hebrew text of Genesis. His process was to transpose the numerical value of the letters using the Arabic numeral system. He then used those numbers to determine a certain quantity of geometries, and his results were simply stunning. What you're seeing right now in this first uh, graphic is a 216 unit outline triangle and I actually replicated his work in a graphics program to see if, if he was correct, to verify his work. And in this graphic depiction, you see 216 unit, 216 uh, squares or boxes that are all lined up perfectly to create a 216 unit outline triangle. So what Vernon Jenkins did was, he took the first words of Genesis 1 through 7 in this graphic, and you see in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Now in the beginning represents to, uh, 913, Elohim, 86. Now there's some contention about whether Elohim or God or the same thing is, is a difference uh, in translation. But created is 203, and the asterisk you see is, represents 401, which doesn't have a direct uh, translation in English. The heaven is 395 and 407, the earth 296, which equals 2701. So in the original 216 outline triangle, we can fill that perfectly with 2701 units of the same outline. And in the next one, words 6 and 7 and the earth have a numerical equivalent of 703. And in this graphic, you see a 703 triangle inset in the original 216 outline triangle. But one of the things to note is that all of the resultant three yellow triangles that you see all have 666 units each which I thought was pretty interesting. The next group, we have words four through eight, the heaven and the earth, and the earth, which has a numerical value in Hebrew of 1801. In this graphic, we see an 1801 hexagon inset in the original 216 outline triangle. And one of the other things to note is that each side has 25 units, the perimeter is 144 units, and there are 49 rows, which all are perfect squares. The next one comes from Genesis 1-2, words 2 through 8, which states, 
was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The numerical value of this is 1875 or 625 times 3, which gives us three 625 rhombus insets. Next, words 2 through 8 of Genesis 1-2, and the spirit of the Elohim moved on the face of the waters. This has a numerical equivalent of 1369 or 37 times 37, which gives us a 1369 rhombus inset, still perfectly in the 216 outline triangle. So this is hinting towards a whole new level of interrelatedness of everything within our reality. That something as simple as words and something as seemingly opposite as geometry have something in common. They begin with sound. All sciences ultimately derive from vibration. Complex physics distills down into math and from math geometry. But you can also create geometry from vibration. This cymatics experiment is used by researchers to visualize related geometric patterns that specific frequencies create. It consists of a speaker playing a frequency underneath a thin metal sheet holding ordinary sand. As you can see, the sand is responding to the sound it is receiving and creating a geometric pattern that is particular to the individual frequency. You will notice that the sand is only creating defined geometric patterns in response to Pythagorean interval of the 432. This image is taken from John Stuart Reed's cymatic experiment conducted to show the geometry that the pure 432 hertz tone creates. The triangular shaped hole in the middle is created by the 432 hertz sound and it is in this exact shape of what is known as the trion ray, rediscovered by Michael R. Evans. It is the smallest platonic solid that represents a single pulse of light of spirit in 3D. This three-sided shape tessellates to create all the rest of the platonic solids. This shows that the 432 is in acoustical and structural harmony with the pulsing of light as it travels, similar to how your heart beats over time. For example, as this trion ray is coming towards you through the screen, the purple ripples that are created by the 432 hertz sound encapsulate this single pulse of light. Then by Pythagorean intervals of the 432, it is able to control the compression of the hole until a new pulse begins to expand. So, if all the sciences, physics, math, geometry, etc., can be distilled down and simplified to vibration, and music is vibration, then I think we should go back to understanding the principles of creation through music as the Pythagoreans once endeavored. Remembering that this concept is probably one of the most reoccurring topics you will ever find when examining the philosophies of our ancient past. Pythagoras, the Greek mathematician and astronomer, is credited for originating the music of the spheres theory. It states that there are musical intervals, or mathematical ratios, found in the distance and size of the planets and in their movements around one another, which is said to mimic ballet movements. Pythagoras spent over 22 years studying with the great teachers of ancient Kemet, or what is known as Egypt today. Upon his return to Europe, he founded a school in Italy to teach mathematicians and philosophers about how the fundamental principle of creation is founded on the understanding of harmony in music. He had well over 2,500 students at his school, and even Galileo used the principles that Pythagoras taught as a base to develop his theory. The book of nature is written in mathematical symbols. Pythagoras's ancient theories are just as relevant today as they were 3,000 years ago. He is most famous for his discovery of the formula to find the length of the sides of any right angle triangle, which is known as the Pythagorean theorem, which today plays a key role in our architecture and geometric sciences. Many other philosophers believed and taught for thousands of years that the key to this musical universe is in the science of numbers.